on Spotlight, sharing life-saving knowledge why high schoolers may be effective teachers for their younger peers. They may call it new math, but is it really new? We break down the variety of techniques your child is learning. Then, Legos as more than just fun. See how these building blocks are being used as an important teaching tool. And can your dog do this? Children marvel at these special talents, but these canines have a far bigger role. Hi everyone, I'm Rick Blackwell. And I'm Claudia Shea. Welcome to this edition of Spotlight on Education. We begin today with a clean slate. The Rotary Club of Wellington decided to pay the outstanding lunch debts of Palm Beach County students, $20,000 worth of them. School lunches are free or at a reduced price for students whose families meet certain criteria. But sometimes they still may not be able to cover the $2.05 or $2.30 cost. The Rotary Club of Wellington was honored for their generosity at a recent board meeting. And at that same board meeting, honors were also given to two teachers at Equestrian Trails Elementary School in Wellington. Mandy Kapopoulos and Elizabeth Richards were given a game ball in recognition for their efforts to save a third grader who accidentally impaled himself with a freshly sharpened pencil. The teachers applied pressure to his wound and kept the boy calm until paramedics arrived. Elbridge Gale Elementary School students are learning some really difficult scientific principles thanks to a popular toy and a large donation from a local foundation. All right, add in a passionate teacher and you have a wonderful learning environment at the Wellington School. Elbridge Gale Elementary School student David Dirk gets very excited yes! when it comes to Legos and learning. This popular toy also a teaching tool for students. I want to thank Elbridge Gale because they let me use um, awesome technology and let me build and program with the Legos. The fourth graders use the Legos and iPads in their weekly technology class to learn about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math principles. The science lesson revolves around physics. So putting the tires in here is causing friction. Technology explored when students build a code on their iPads. The engineering component, building the robots, and math needed to follow step-by-step -step instructions. It's every educator's dream to see children so excited to learn about science and technology. A dream made possible through a $25,000 grant from the Jacobs Foundation, which purchased the iPads and Legos. The children are very appreciative. I like hands-on activities because you can actually physically feel how, like friction and how it works. Creating a wonderful environment for learning at Elbridge Gale Elementary, it's a snap. Pratt & Whitney in West Palm Beach is doing its part to sow the seeds of environmental stewardship. Exactly. You know, over the last few years, it's awarded grants to 10 schools to fund gardening and nature programs. Recently, it awarded North Grade Elementary a Green Power Grant. Students planted hundreds of seeds in recycled egg cartons. Once established, the plants will be transferred to new garden beds. Teachers say gardening teaches students important life lessons. Personalized learning in district schools is multiplying. For example, the number of math students taking AMP, Accelerated Math Program, has doubled since its launch last year. It really is incredible. Check out how more than 2,500 elementary school students are now on the math fast track. that you have correct. Students in this fourth grade class at Del Prado Elementary are math whizzes whose knowledge is growing exponentially thanks to AMP, Accelerated Math Program. The AMP program is helping me because in other grades I didn't feel challenged during math. The district launched AMP last year and expanded it to nearly all elementary schools this year amid tremendous success. And I'm telling you, I think we've stumbled into something that's pretty amazing. It's a personalized program that fast tracks high performing students who complete a three year math curriculum in just two years. I think it's important that first you identify the kids and then also challenge them with this because 
you're giving them that opportunity to get into programs later on, especially in middle school and high school, where these kids will be working toward college credit when they're halfway through high school. These students will be ready for seventh grade math when they enter sixth grade. When I got here two years ago, I realized rather quickly that not enough of our children are taking calculus before they graduate. And calculus is one of the number one indicators of success in college, particularly in the jobs of the future, which include technology and science. Or really any career. Uh, I actually want to run my own doggy daycare. And the knowledge of math is always necessary for payroll. I think it's going to help me split the money between all of us, get them paid. And so I'm super excited to do that. And then I'm going to have to pay the money for a van that's going to wash the dogs. And I'm just super excited already. Other students are also super excited about one day sharing their love of math with other students. I want to be a teacher teaching math like my, my teacher. That's why I want to stay in this program. And this program is here to stay. There are many wonderful educators in our district. Only one can be named Principal of the Year. And this year the winner is Sandra Edwards, Principal of Washington Elementary School in Riviera Beach. Mrs. Edwards was honored at a recent school board meeting. Under her leadership, Washington Elementary improved its letter grade from an F to a B in one school year, and that really is quite a dramatic turnaround. Our congratulations to Mrs. Edwards and her students. She's doing a wonderful job at Washington Elementary. Now at that same meeting, the board addressed its own leadership. Chairman Chuck Shaw and Vice Chair Dr. Deborah Robinson will both remain in their positions. All right, Rick, you know the saying, what's old is new again. Well, that certainly is the case in math classrooms across the country. In today's Parent University segment, Trisha Shervin explains new math and how it can actually help students later in life. There's two ways, so you can always, you know, whichever way you feel most comfortable. So this is the way we just do it vertically and you find a common denominator. John F. Kennedy Middle School students are learning new math, a concept born decades ago, which is all about options. So new math is a way of approaching mathematical problems that rather than applying one specific way to solve a problem to a problem, you instead learn multiple processes and then students have the flexibility to choose which process best suits them to solve that particular problem. Flexibility in solving math problems can be a foreign concept to many parents who may have learned math through memorization. How many people actually remember how exactly to do long division? If you're not using it frequently, you're going to forget the things that you memorize. The school district of Palm Beach County provides many resources to help. Start with palmbeachschools.org, click on the Parents tab, and go to Edline to find your child's school page. Or go to Departments, then Elementary Education, and then Mathematics. Our elementary math team and secondary math teams post videos and other tools that are specifically geared towards parents, not students. So your student is studying this. Here's how we're teaching them to solve those problems. And it gives parents a quick update, a quick overview, so then they're, they're able to assist their students. Jason Powell has three school-aged children and consults teachers, friends, and the internet when his family needs math help. I think that if you show that you're persistent, your children see that um, you know, they don't have to get frustrated, that they can actually get to the right answer if they stay persistent as well. The thought behind teaching multiple problem-solving processes is to prepare students for later life. When they go to college, the idea that they're going to face challenges that you're not going to be there to assist them with, and they're going to be able to approach that from an analytical, logical standpoint, evaluate options, and apply the best option. New math providing new methods for success. You know, the district strives to give every student the opportunity to achieve through a variety of programs and choices. It also has dedicated professionals who share that vision for success. Today, Kate Wentley shares the unusual journey of one of those educators, a medical doctor who is a product of our school system. I started here in 19, 1980 when I came from, uh, from Cuba. I was uh, one of those little Marielitos. One among nearly 125,000 Cuban migrants taking part in the Mariel boat lift. People desperate to create a new and better life in the United States. If you work hard and you do what you're supposed to do, you're going to make your dreams come true. It doesn't matter who you are. 
From those humble beginnings, a determined Miguel Benavente emerged as a medical doctor and one of the district's most passionate educators. I'm a proud of Palm Beach County Schools. Learning English in two years, he graduated with honors, attending college and then medical school. His passion is sharing his knowledge of medicine with young people, starting the first middle school medical program in the district and the entire state. Give them goals uh, to do things to see early on and pursue those dreams because they are achievable. If you believe, you can achieve. I want to be a pediatric surgeon because I love kids but I also want to do surgery, and I feel like pediatric surgery is the best for me. Dr. Benavente takes an active role overseeing the 40 medical sciences academies throughout the district. He interviews prospective teachers for the specialized programs and makes sure they and their students have the best equipment possible in their classrooms. He's all about the children. He, he wants to see them grow and, and be successful in life. Chris Foster knows. This former student knows the value of the education he received from Dr. B, as he's known. I was so much further ahead of everybody else in my high school because I went to this program. I got certifications that I could actually work. I was a medical assistant certified, so I went to college and I was working when my friends weren't, didn't have the qualifications to get a job. I was making about $15 an hour. Now, as a third year medical student, Farhard recognizes the importance of that experience and the genuine guidance of his mentor. He had the charisma about him that he wanted us to learn, so we wanted to learn. And not many teachers could do that. Not many teachers can give you that kind of you know, energy. His passion for medicine, for learning, and for sharing that knowledge to forge a pathway for others to succeed. You know, showing my teachers and showing my former students, whatever your ultimate goal is, you can do it. Because if I did it, you can do it too. He leads such a great group of young people. He really does. And some of those high school medical academy students are sharing their knowledge in an effort to save lives. Students from John I. Leonard's Medical Academy are teaching hands-only CPR to their counterparts at L.C. Swain Middle School. We started with middle schoolers because, well, my, my students are high schoolers and um, high school uh, the middle school students love the, the high schoolers. They look up to them, think they're cool, and they want to you know, do what they're doing. So we thought if we have them modeling this behavior, wanting to save people, knowing what to do in an emergency situation, that um, they would you know, be interested in it. Uh, so a lot of middle schoolers, they have younger siblings, and they wanna, their parents want to leave them at home and have them watch them while they go to the grocery store or something. And anything can happen in those, those 15 minutes that they go to the, the Walmart down the street. Um, so it's really important for everyone to know how to actually do CPR. The Palm Beach Philanthropy Tank helped pay for this program and also for the medical mannequins that are used by the students. You know, it's always fun to have special guests come to school, especially when those guests share their interesting stories. Or have four legs and lots of fur. Such was the case recently for students at Frontier Elementary School. Perhaps nothing gets the attention of fifth graders faster than dogs. And pair those dogs with veterans and you have the makings of some great lessons. When you see somebody with a service dog, they might look really cute and fluffy if you want to go up and pet them. Should you go up and pet them? No. no. Right, because they're working. We want our young people to know the importance of animals and Paws for Liberty is a local organization that trains service dogs for our returning wounded warriors. Students at Frontier Elementary in Loxahatchee are familiar with all sorts of animals. This choice school is home to an environmental and animal science academy. Even so, all were impressed to see these canine companions at work. From obvious tasks, like picking up an object on the floor, to more subtle jobs, like shielding and comforting a veteran with PTSD. So it's on the cover, sit, so now I don't have to worry about nobody coming behind me. Coming to um, events like this, there's a lot, of the, the two veterans that were on stage today, me personally, and as, as um, the director of the uh, Pause for Liberty, I'm very proud of them because for them to go on stage in front of um, 
uh, uh, people and talk and speak about some of their experiences, though it was minimal, but of course, we, you know, we have the, the children that we're, they're talking to. That's a huge step, and that's part of the, the help that the dogs do. They start to give them more confidence. Our fifth graders have the great opportunity of having um, some real-life superheroes come and share with them their experiences and their need for service dogs. These students share a real respect for those who are serving and have served. We're a very patriotic family, and three of our three of my grandpas served, and one served in the na two served in the Navy, and one served in the Army, and we just honor them a lot. There are also lots of questions for veterans. Everybody on my family was Army, so I was the first one to go to the Marine Corps and about those dogs, all of which come from shelters, rescue groups, or are donated to the organization. We start with them as early as we can, not too young. We like them a little bit older so they're a little bit more mature. We definitely like to see a dog that has stability, nerve, and the correct temperament for the work. Just like Ezra. Ezra is what I would consider the ideal dog. He's big, he's fluffy, he's happy. Great to look at, and he actually listens <laughs> once in a while. I hope they will have a new appreciation for our service people, as well as knowing some uh, possible future um, jobs or occupations that they can have in uh, dealing with animals since we are an animal academy. What a fabulous program. Yeah, that's well cool. done. Okay, Olympic Heights High School senior Kaylee Cunningham has a 4.0 GPA and is co president of the Math National Honor Society. She also played on the basketball team. She keeps pretty busy. Yeah. Kaylee hopes her experiences at Olympic Heights will help her one day in her training to become an astronaut. She is clearly a student success story. Hi, I'm Kaylee Cunningham and I'm a senior over here at Olympic Heights High School. The astronaut challenge is kind of like my thing. We get to go to Kennedy Space Center for three to four days and we fly a space shuttle simulator. We do an engineering challenge where they give us physics or math problems. I want to be an astronaut because space is constantly, infinitely expanding um, and it's always changing and there's so much we don't know about it. I want to see what else there is, you know? Um, I'm just curious. I spent a lot of time in front of the computer coding. It's very challenging, um, but I also find it very intellectually stimulating because it's problem solving. I like to see the beauty in technology and to create something that would actually help someone it made me feel grateful to do something productive and make a difference. I was really proud to um, be fortunate enough to win the Congressional App Challenge and my app was called Number Ninja. It's a program to basically teach math. I am incredibly grateful to be at Olympic Heights. Seeing that they have an engineering academy, um, it completely changed my world. Teachers like Miss Nimi, um, she inspires me every day um, to keep working harder and keep pushing towards my dreams because um, being in this kind of environment with so much encouragement um, makes you realize that your dreams could be possible. I'm Kaylee Cunningham from Olympic Heights High School and excellence happens here. Straight ahead, meet the Palm Beach County School student who appeared on national TV. From Timber Trace to The Tonight Show, why Jimmy Fallon selected her to be on his show.
Sullivan and I'm a fifth grader here at Timber Trace Elementary School in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. I love school. It's important for me to be a good student. My favorite subjects in school are math, science, vocab, and reading. It would be one tenth. I also love school because everybody is very nice to me and I love my teachers and I love my best friends. What about a pig -a corn? A pig -a corn. Yes. A yes. unicorn. Wait, a papa, a papa unicorn or a kitty butterfly corn. We make up funny animal names like unipiggy or papa corn. So recently I just did a Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon in New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 10 year old Madison Moman right there. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, Golf Digest asked me my dream foursome, and I said Jimmy Fallon, Justin Timberlake, and Taylor Swift, and Jimmy Fallon wanted me on his show after that. Give me a hug, give me a hug, cuddle. A hug, cuddle. It was really fun for me, it was super cool. It was all about playing golf ski ball. Oh my goodness. Some of my greatest golfing accomplishments are being on the Jimmy Fallon Tonight Show, getting four hole-in-ones, being ranked 13th in the world. I just love the game now, it's my passion. I work about three to four hours a day. It's very important to be outside because if you're inside playing video games, then you won't be actually getting exercise. When I get older, I wanna be a professional LPGA tour player. I dream big and everybody should because if you have a goal, you should try and achieve it. And I'm Madison Moman here at Timber Trace Elementary School where excellence happens here. She was on The Tonight Show when she was in the fifth grade. She may make another appearance. She's such an outstanding young golfer and boy, she practices so hard. We wish her all the best. All that dedication, all the hours that she puts yeah. in. That's what it takes, though, to win. It does. Way to go. You know, you're always going to be in the know about school-related news when you download the school district's new free mobile app. And here it is right here. You can access Edline, check the district's calendar, see your child's lunch menus, and so, so much more. All you have to do is search for School District of Palm Beach County in either the iTunes App Store or in Google Play. Okay, straight ahead, a profile of an incredible school in Belle Glade. The students making huge strides in the arts and academics. We're going to tell you where, coming up. When our kids don't go to school every day, they get further and further behind. From preschool to high school, every day counts. They need to go to grow every day, all day. Attendance matters. Watch the Education Network on Comcast Channel 234 and AT&T U-verse Channel 99. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. What are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? Welcome back to Spotlight. Students at Gladeview Elementary School have a chance to express their creativity through art, band, chorus, dance, TV production, and vocal music. A lot of great opportunities for these pre-K through fifth graders to be the best they can be in arts and academics. At Belle Glade Elementary School, the goal is to create a lifelong foundation for student academic success beyond the school and into the community. Belle Glade Elementary features hardworking students, talented teachers, what shape are you making? and caring administrators. The school also does a wonderful job of integrating technology into the classroom. In this lesson, students answer a math problem by holding up one side of their unique QR code. The teacher scans the answers and knows immediately who understands the lesson. I know who I'm going to pull to my small group for reteach or more instruction on this topic. There is personalized learning going on all over the campus. Just about every classroom has a teacher and a tutor. The children benefit from the one-on-one -on -one interactions. 
with the tutor here, she's able to pull a group, I'm able to pull a group, I'm able to circulate and monitor my kids as to see, you know, are they mastering these standards? You know, what can I do to help them to master these standards so that we can get the academic achievement? Belglade Elementary also has an active AVID program. AVID stands for Advancement Via Individual Determination. The goal is to prepare all students, even children in elementary school, for college. So let's go ahead and take out and open our AVID binders to our science section. The hope is by holding students accountable and providing them with academic support, they will rise to the challenge. If we are giving them the tools to succeed earlier in life, it helps them so that they can continue to be organized and prepared. Belglade Elementary also features gifted classes. What is the main idea of Section 2? Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math or STEM classes. So we take our ruler and we put it here. Creativity reigns supreme in the school's arts and chorus programs. The school is also home to the Dr. Ben Carson Reading Room a place where children can read books in comfortable chairs. This school offers something for everyone with one common mission. The mission of Belgrade Elementary School is to and I'm Rick Blackwell for the School District of Palm Beach County, your best choice. Do you have a story we should know about? Feel free to email us at goodnews at palmbeachschools.org. And that'll do it for this edition of Spotlight on Education, brought to you by the Education Network. Keeping you informed.